In my opinion, innovation increases proportionally to the number of people who try to innovate. And that's why our mission is to make technology available to as many people as possible so that they can innovate. I would like to start by going through a process of how to get from an idea to a working product and how we can help with that. I have thought about something for my home office and had an idea. Maybe some of you know the moment when you are thirsty but you are too lazy to get a new bottle of water. That's why I want to build a robot that drives the water bottle to me when I need it and then drives back to place where it does not bother me. First, I need motors of course and preferably also some with encoder so that you can drive a certain route. Then as wheels, omnidirectional wheels would still allow the robot to turn with four motors. Furthermore, ultrasonic sensors would be a good idea so the robot does not crash into objects and finally a Bluetooth module can tell the robot that he can start the route. But to find all the components and build a robot with them is not that difficult compared to making the robot really drive remotely. And ideally everything works autonomously so that the robot remembers the route and can even avoid obstacles. But what do you use to control all this? My first idea was of course a simple microcontroller which you can get in all possible versions. But with so many sensors and tasks it has to handle, it was not as easy as I thought. With every sensor that is connected, the cycle time increases and it becomes more and more difficult to program. And therefore, I come to FPGAs. So everyone understands the basic difference to microcontrollers, I would compare this code example. The microcontroller would use the end function to calculate the upper line. Then in the next step, the second line. And then the third line. An FPGA on the other hand is fundamentally different with thousands of logic blocks and these also include AND gates. So you would just have three AND gates in the FPGA which would execute the calculation in parallel. And so it is now possible with the FPGA to create a parallel running process for each sensor. Thus the performance stays the same with an increasing number of sensors and the programming also does not get more complicated. And a big advantage is that you can also use the logic elements to add a processor to the design that could then do the Bluetooth communication and the root calculation. And now we can assemble our robot with this concept. I now finish the hardware but I still have to program the robot. And that is not so easy with FPGAs when you use the standard tools that are not exactly made for beginners. And also things like tutorials are limited compared to microcontrollers. And that is not something I experienced while preparing for this talk but 5 years ago. And I can say I built the robot that way without help and mostly by trial and error. But it took 1 year and that was not an experience I could recommend. But the possibilities of FPGAs offered me too many advantages, so I didn't stop. But the way to program them was not something I wanted to accept. I teamed up with a friend and we tried to tackle all the points that bothered us one by one to be able to use FPGAs intuitively. And so I present here today the in my opinion most intuitive development environment for FPGAs. No matter if I talk about hardware programming, simulation or processor programming. And additionally, I may present our programming language, which is the only one that makes hardware programming as easy as software programming and still uses the full performance and possibilities of the FPGA. And besides our tutorials on our website, you can already find 31 videos explaining everything from basic functions to whole projects. For example, the tutorial for the robot will also be published here when it is finished. On GitHub, you can find hundreds of files of example code. Everything from simple things like SPI interface to complex things like image recognition. 
And if there are still questions, you can always find an answer on our Discord within a very short time. And now, I would like to go through the process of how programming with the VHD Plus IDE looks like. First, I create a new project, and here's the special feature. You can choose our language VHDP, and secondly, you have the possibility to choose the extensions you want to use. And that would be in this case the motor extension and the level shifter for the 5V ultrasonic sensors. These can be plugged directly on our development boards with the Crewby standard connector and the sample code is generated automatically. Here in the generated code, you can see what makes our language different from the others. Besides the possibility to be exactly as efficient as VHDL, you can add a so-called thread. In this thread, you can program like on a microcontroller with four loops or delays. The only difference is that you can have as many of them as you want, all running in parallel. I won't go into the other aspects of the language for now, because for that we have our website and our YouTube channel. I'd rather talk about another advantage we have because of the freely configurable logic blocks. You can add a microcontroller and configure it freely. With our NIOS creator window, you already have a lot of choice, but if the processor is created, you have even more things to customize. And of course it can be programmed in our IDE with Arduino libraries. We have worked on this for a very long time, so that this is as simple as possible. On the right side, under the tab Library Explorer, you can find our libraries for FPGA programming and also some libraries for software programming which are optimized for the NIOS processor. And now I come to something that could have saved me months of work 5 years ago. It is very helpful to simulate your program before you implement everything on the FPGA. And of course we have also thought of that. We offer a system that allows you to easily create a test program graphically and program it yourself at the same time. To test the function of the robot, you have to simulate how the motors send impulses to the FPGA. Then, you can simulate the program and see all the signals in the design and how they change. This helps a lot to identify the errors. And to make this all work this intuitively, we have worked together with the German manufacturer Trends Electronic and created the, in my opinion, best development boards for beginners. These boards use the full performance of FPGAs and are so easy to use that even someone with absolutely no knowledge of electronics will be able to create a working system within a few clicks. And now I would like to talk about the CYC1000 and MAX1000 in particular. These are also integrated into the IDE and are a good point to start with the FPGAs. You can get the MAX1000 for 30 euros, although it has an SD RAM, an acceleration sensor, flash and a programmer included. Because of the integration in our IDE, you can for example connect the pins very easily graphically. And also for example, the acceleration sensor can be selected when creating the project and then the data can be visualized with our IDE. And what is also suitable for the visualization would be the Max CO2. It has a high precision CO2 sensor and can display the temperature and humidity. Here are all the links again to get some inspiration. For questions, just ask on our Discord and maybe someone has an idea for a project. Then I could give some advice. Thank you for watching this translated version of our Maker Fair presentation and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on our next videos.